Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You're all very welcome this morning, whether you're here in church or down the hall or watching online. And our prayer this morning is that wherever you are, that you will meet with the living God. That as we worship Him and we open His Word, you'll be blessed by Him. So can we stand together this morning and in the hall also? And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we come to a time of confession, let's just take a moment to be still and to be silent, to think about our week, to think about the things that we have done wrong or we have said that we shouldn't have, things that haven't pleased God. Let's take a moment to bring those to mind and then to say, sorry, to him. And so we pray together, Lord God, Lord God, we come to you with sorrow for our sins, and we ask for your help and strength. Help us to know ourselves, accept our weakness, and resist temptation. Strengthen us with your forgiving love so that we may more courageously follow and obey your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. A merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all of our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the fourth Sunday before Advent. Almighty and the eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Our first reading this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Chapter 2, and then getting at the ninth verse. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work day and night in order to not be a burden to anyone, while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each other, each of you, as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually, because you have received the word of God, which you heard from us. You accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is, the word of God which is indeed a work in you who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can we stand together as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 361. Now thank we all our God.
Please be seated for our second reading. Our second reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their palatries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be God. God. Nick is now going to bring us our sermon. Let's uh, pray together. Father, we thank you that uh, we can gather uh, as uh, your people in this place. And uh, we thank you for uh, Amelia Rose, and we can welcome her into uh, this parish and into the wider church uh, that is your body here on earth. Thank you now, Father, for the words uh, that we read from Scripture. Pray now, Lord, that as I come to speak uh, to them, uh, that you would put on my tongue the words that you would have us hear, and our hearts would be open to hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now, uh, forgive me for a minute or two because uh, I'll be turning my my back on you occasionally to pick things off the communion table. Um, the first thing, though, I want to uh, ask you is um, the ways in which we communicate and uh, the ways in which you prefer to, to send uh, messages and um, uh, I, I'm sure uh, you, you would be happy to shout out some of the ways in which you like to send messages up here in the church. I don't expect you to do it down in the hall now. Letters, uh, letters here, social media, social media. text, text. Uh, I, those, those are some of the things that I was thinking about. Um, the ways we send messages. I have a few with me, and uh, I have a, a, a card that's all ready to send. Uh, there's a, a sister-in-law has a birthday coming up, and uh, and I, I know that, uh, people like they like writing and uh, popping it in the post box, and then uh, it's nice to receive it uh, through through the door. Now you also mentioned uh, text there and um, social media, and I suppose this probably uh, is the way in which uh, many, many people send messages today. I was actually reading somewhere uh, that the, the under 30s wouldn't understand if you made this gesture. I'm not too sure, because that's a gesture of my generation. If you're talking to somebody on the phone, they might understand more if you did that or that. <laughs> Uh, messages, well, the way we send messages is always changing, um, but uh, the, the phone is essentially a small computer and you can email or you can text or you can social media, um, you can do those uh, different ways. Now, I also have a, a piece of paper uh, with me. Now, um, yeah, you could, you could use that to write, but what I'm actually going to use it to do is, um, it's probably not quite big enough. But you can uh, shout out, can't you? Uh, and uh, 
and that's one way. Well, if, well, if you're starting back to school tomorrow, don't try it. Uh, I can tell you uh, from experience, teachers don't like you shouting out in class. Uh, they would rather you put up your hand. And I have another, I have a bottle here too now. And um, now we picked a bottle up on Castle Rock Beach in the summer and there was a message inside it. Now I don't think that's a terribly effective way of sending a message. But there was a message, somebody had thrown it in the beat in the sea at, at Benone Caravan Park and, and it had ended up in Castle Rock Beach. Uh, three little girls from Glen Gormley had sent a message in a bottle. Not the most effective way. And uh, we're coming up in remembrance. And the, the, the forces in the um, Second World War apparently very effectively communicated with pigeons of all things. <laughs> Uh, and I know there's people in the congregation who would keep pigeons and homing pigeons in the past, not now, sending messages. And so uh, that's the, the thought that I, I have in and around the, the first of our two readings is um, the ways in which we send messages. And um, what we learn in the Bible, and the baptism service is actually a wonderful illustration of it because we start at the very beginning of creation and we finish in the Bible with the, the establishment of the, the church uh, and the promises thereafter. Uh, uh, and right through the Bible, we see that God loves us and the Bible is a message of love to us. And within it, of course, there is uh, that greatest of love stories, and that is that God sent his only son uh, to earth uh, to, to die for us, uh, in place of us, for all the things that we have done wrong, so that God uh, and, and humanity could be, be reconciled one to the other. It's, it's an absolute love story. And, and as disciples of Jesus, um, uh, we, we have a task uh, just as Jesus carried God's love to us and showed that love in his death, we also have a task. And Paul uh, refers to that in verse 13. And I'm going to read it. Uh, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is. The word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. So the Paul, Paul tells us that when people heard the message of God, God's love, they accepted it as true. And he says, the message of God works in you who believe. And it's that little phrase, works in you who believe. You and I are God's message of love in this generation. That's the task that we have been given, to share God's love. And, um, and there's all those different ways that I've talked about sharing love. And you can actually share God's love in those ways, by text message, by, by, um, by uh, uh, an email or, or, or by a letter. Uh, those are all very, very good ways to share God's love. And maybe at the minute, that is one of the ways that we, we have to do that because we can't hug people, uh, we can't reach out and shake a hand, we can't, uh, in the same sense, come along people physically as, as uh, we're used to. Now, I want to turn now to the second of the two readings and a few other things here uh, that I want us to think about because the second reading does inform us about how we are to be messengers of God's love. Now, I have a few things with me now. What have I got uh, here that might be... Now, there's a, a picture uh, there of a place that I'm very fond of, Musendon Temple, and um, that's a painting by an artist uh, from, from Larne. And um, one thing that all artists like is to have their work framed and hanging up in a gallery, isn't it? And, and that would be something that they would like. Uh, I've also a music book here, I picked up a hymn, hymn book, but I, this is the selected themes from the motion picture, Harry Potter. And uh, there's lovely uh, music within it and that uh, you can play. And there's nothing that uh, a musician likes uh, better than to be appreciated for the music they, they bring to us. And something here that I know might upset some of you, and please forgive me, but it was the only sports talk I could find uh, within the house. 
it's the it's the champions uh, sports talk as you can see it's Liverpool, Liverpool FC and uh, what a sports people like and dear love them they can't get too much of it at the minute they love applause don't they and uh, if you watch the, the, the rugby yesterday empty stadiums all around but they like they like applause and uh, I don't have a school report with me. That would be embarrassing because there's, <laughs> there's quite a few of them uh, down in the house. Uh, and embarrassing for the wrong reasons, actually. <laughs> Not because they're good. Um, uh, from my own childhood, uh, they're down in the house. My dad used to keep them and he passed them on. Uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're academic uh, and you're gifted uh, and uh, uh, in that way, isn't it great when people acknowledge that? Now, that's the second lesson I'm thinking of because there's a lot of things there that um, we, we, we do. We like to be appreciated for what we do, the gifts and talents that we have. And as messengers of love, we can use those gifts and talents in ways uh, that uh, encourage other people. Uh, and, uh, but it comes down to the, the right way that we use them. And the Bible, uh, the Bible passage from the Gospel is telling us, well, you know what, there are ways that aren't right. And these, these guys were very, very academic, the Pharisees. The Pharisees um, were the religious leaders, they were very intelligent people, and uh, because they were clever, uh, they were able to read the, the Old Testament and uh, interpret the laws and add bits to it, and they loved nothing better than uh, to display their their intelligence and um, and that that was something that uh, uh, was was not what they should have been doing because if you actually look into the Old Testament, God said what you should be doing um, in Amos is actually in the prophet Amos said looking after uh, the the weak and the hungry. Uh, what they were doing by displaying uh, all their talents and interpreting law was actually putting a burden on people and making it more difficult for people uh, and, uh, and the temple taxes and everything that they gathered in made it more difficult. And so what Jesus says is about them is um, the Pharisees say and don't do. Uh, we might say uh, practice what you preach today. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. That's verse three. And I think that's one of the lessons that we learn today as messengers of God's love is to be very careful uh, that we practice what we preach. Uh, and these two lessons actually sit very nicely together in that sense. Our goal shouldn't be to impress people with our accomplishments, uh, the things that we achieve. Our goal uh, should be rather to use our gifts and talents in ways uh, that encourage, support other people uh, in, 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 the, in, in what they need to do. Um, being true to ourselves and honouring God uh, is, is living a life like that. And it's, it's described in the last uh, verse of that as being humble. And that's the, uh, that the greatest amongst you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who hum humble themselves will be exalted. As carriers of God's message of love, that's what we're asked to do. And we've got this wonderful example, Jesus. Uh, Jesus uh, humbled himself to death on a cross. That's what we are called to do, to live humbly as messengers of love. So I, I would like to say, I talked about the gifts and talents that we have. We all have them and they are a blessing from God. He's encouraging us to use them. As, uh, as messengers of his love today. He's saying, practice what you preach. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the two passages from scripture that we have read this morning. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the word contained within them. We appreciate the danger of uh, being like the Pharisees, Help us to be humble uh, and to use the gifts that you've given us to be messengers of your love, to build your kingdom in the here and now. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nick. And as those who are called to be messengers of love, let us now stand together and offer up praise to God by singing together hymn number 634, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Christ 
our Lord. Amen. And Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you raised Jesus from the dead and exalted him to be Lord of all. Hear us as we pray in his name for the needs of this world and of our own concerns. God of creation, who made the heavens and the stars and all that are below, we give you praise for who you are, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who even the sea obeys, and the one who in love sent his only son for each of us, that we may one day come to know him. God, we give you thanks, and we ask that even as creation sings your praises, so may we. In times of hardship and in times of joy, let us continually lift you high. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's pray for the nations of this world. We pray this morning for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who face persecution. And Lord God, we give you thanks for their faith and their love for you. And God, we ask that you may continually bless and use each of them in the midst of their persecution. May they know you close to them, and may they continue to be bold and confident in you. And we pray by their example and faith and love for you, those around them may come to see you, the King of Kings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we pray for our country of Northern Ireland. And Lord, we pray as we enter into another lockdown. God, we pray for those who have lost money from businesses. God, we pray that you will be with them at this time. In the midst of the uncertainty that they are facing, may they know your peace with them. And may you be with those who are leading us in these strange times. Give them your wisdom and your knowledge. And God, as we are in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, we pray for those who are researching a vaccine. And Lord God, we pray expectantly, Father, that you will be with them, that you will give them all the knowledge and wisdom that they need to make a breakthrough. And we pray that there will be a vaccine with us soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we will pray for your church here in Macarville. And we give you thanks and praise for this place as a worshipping church. We pray for Nick as he leads us here. God, we pray that you will be with him. We pray that you will lead him and guide him so he knows what best to do here. May you give him the wisdom and your vision for this church so he can know how to lead us in serving you better. And Father, we pray for everyone who attends this place. God, we pray that you may lead us closer to yourself and that week by week we may come to know you better and serve you with all of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And let's pray for those who are suffering or struggling with any kind of need, that God may bring them healing, peace, strength and comfort. And we take a moment of silence to bring before God those known to us in need of his presence. And God of comfort, we thank you that you know the needs of each person brought before you this morning. And risen Lord Jesus, who came and spoke peace be with you, we ask that that peace that only you can bring may be present in the lives of all those who are brought before you this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we offer you these prayers in the name of Jesus who suffered and died and rose again for us. We pray that through our prayers and through our lives, you will reach out to all people and bring ever nearer the day when every tongue on earth will indeed proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Amen. And we conclude our prayers by joining together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we join together in the prayer of commissioning at the bottom of your order of services. As we go out of this place, as those called to be messengers of God's love, let us join together in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we go forth into the world to fill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, as we go from church, we do with those words of the blessing. Go and know that the Lord goes with you. Let him lead you each day to the quiet place of your heart where he will speak with you. Know that he loves you and watches over you, that he listens to you in gentle understanding, that he's with you always, wherever you are and however you may feel. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and for all eternity. Amen.